Jesus is saying all the ten things, basically, but says it in two statements. That's all. First, he says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. The two cannot be separated. You're asking for the greatest commandment. There is no other commandment that is greater than this. Chapter 19 of Leviticus and verse 18. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. See, it's there. It says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Now, notice how Jesus takes this verse and uses it. Because scripture must interpret scripture. That's the proper way to go about things. Take, see how Jesus takes this verse and uses it and what he has to say about it. Turn with me to Matthew's gospel, chapter 19. Matthew 19. Jesus says this. Matthew 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? This guy is saying, what should I do? Give me a list. I'll do it to get, to get eternal life. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now all this up to honor your father and mother is all listed in the Ten Commandments, right? Those are from the Ten Commandments, the second section of the Ten Commandments. I told you it's Ten Commandments can be divided into two sections. The first section is about loving God or your relationship with God, the first four commandments. The next six commandments is about your relationship with others, loving others. So the list here includes items from the second section, right? 
But one thing is not in the commandment itself, in the Ten Commandments, it's not part of the Ten Commandments. That statement is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So what is Jesus doing? He's saying, when that man said, which commandment should I follow? Jesus saying, yeah, this commandment, these commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And then he means to say, in essence, you love your neighbor as your self. Jesus is using the statement, love your neighbor as yourself, as a statement of the intent of the law. In other words, he's saying, the law says these things. What it means is, love your neighbor as your self. The law says, thou shalt not murder. The law says, you shall not commit adultery. The law says, thou shalt not steal. The law says, honor your father and mother. What it means to say is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, Jesus himself sees this statement as a very meaningful statement, which is simply stating the intent of the law. So you can practically, instead of saying all the ten items of the Ten Commandments all over again, you can simply say, love your neighbor as yourself. And by doing that, you'll fulfill the law. Because this is what the Ten Commandments intend to convey to you. Right? Now go turn with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. This is another instance where a clever lawyer comes to him. Lawyers are clever always. And uh, look at this, verse 28. Then one of, the, one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning to, together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked them, which is the first commandment of all? Now this guy wants to know, which is the first commandment? Uh, first meaning, not in order first, is actually meaning the greatest commandment or the foremost commandment. In my margin it says foremost. That means which is the greatest commandment. That's the meaning. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, that is the foremost of all the commandment is, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Right? What is he doing? Actually, in the Ten Commandments, it doesn't state it like that. It says you shall have no other gods, you shall not make any other uh, object, you know, and so on. But here, he puts those four laws that have to do our relationship with God and how we relate to God in these words. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. He puts all those four things into one statement. All those four things he means, says that you should love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and heart and strength. That's what it means, he says. And the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Now that man asked only for the greatest commandment. Answer of Jesus comes up with two commandments. And he puts them two together. He says the, first, the second is just like the first one. Even though the first is the foremost, the second is just like the first one, and that is also important. And he means to put them two together because he believes that the two cannot be separated. The two belong together. That is, love God and love your neighbor are two things that belong together. You cannot artificially separate it. You cannot say, just love God. No, you have to love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot say, love your neighbor as yourself and not leave out, love God. Right? So he puts the two together. Now this is a very significant statement because that guy asked what is the greatest commandment. He was hoping to get one commandment given to him as the answer out of the ten. He wants him to pick one. Jesus basically by giving these two commandments and joining them together 
He has not just reduced the Ten Commandments to two. He has literally summarized the Ten Commandments in two statements. All Ten Commandments are there. In other words, Jesus is saying all the ten things, basically, but says it in two statements. That's all. First he says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. The two cannot be separated. You're asking for the greatest commandment. There is no other commandment that is greater than these. These two commandments, he says. The first one is about the first section of the Ten Commandments. The second one is about the second section of the Ten Commandments. The two cannot be separated. Now, this is a very important point I want to make here. Because we live in a very tricky world. When the devil is there, the world is, becomes tricky. He's a trickster, you know. That's why you need to be careful. That's why we need to be very smart in this world. We should not be taken for a ride with all the philosophy of this world. In this world, you know what they've done with this statement, love your neighbor as yourself, and the statement that says, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you fulfill the law. Love does not do harm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. I'm quoting from Romans 13. They've taken those statements and they've said, all right then, that's wonderful. So then it doesn't matter whether there is a God or not. I don't really believe in a God, some people say. I find it very difficult to believe that Jesus is Lord and God and all this. Don't tell me that he's the divine son of God, born of a virgin died on a cross and rose again. All that business, I don't want to believe. That's too difficult to believe. I don't want to be concerned with God, the very idea of God. I want to, I want to just ignore it because that's a controversial idea. I don't want to go into that. Let's not talk about God. Forget about God, they say. Let's talk about loving one another. That's very practical stuff. It doesn't matter whether there is God or not. Whether there is a God or not, it does not matter. What matters is that we love one another. Now that sounds like the devil talking, doesn't it? Whenever the devil talks, it's very nice to hear. It sounds like it's just right, you know. He came into the Garden of Eden, he looked at Eve and said, as God said, you shall not eat of any of the trees of the garden. Look at the question. Eh? Has God said, you shall not eat of the, any of the trees of the, of the garden? As if God is a cruel master, you know, that he'll make a garden with thousands of fruit-bearing trees and say, don't you touch one of them, you know. But she says, no, 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 just the one in the middle, the knowledge of the tree of, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he told us not to eat and not even to touch it. He never said not touch it, he said don't eat it. That shows that, that shows that whoever conveyed that to her, which is probably Adam, he was not a very good teacher, <laughs> didn't do a good job. So she was confused about what God said, you know. Then he says, then she says, he said, don't eat it, don't touch it. And if you do, the day you do it, you'll die. He says, the devil says, no, you will not die. Look at him. You will not die. The day you eat it, your eyes will be opened. You'll become like God. You will not die. Their eyes opened and they saw that they were naked, sinners, driven out of the garden, lost everything. That's what happened. See, the, the devil always twists and turns things so that you go away from God. So a lot of people take this verse and make a very big blunder. They say, all right, look at Romans 13. They say, Paul is very right and the New Testament is very right. Even Jesus is very right. He said, love your neighbor as your self that's the that's the best thing that you can tell people today because everybody is fighting based on caste based on religion based on uh, economic status based on uh, language they're fighting about something one language group the, uh, against the other one religion against the other one caste against the other and so on so we need to love one another what a wonderful idea what a terrific teaching Bible is giving that we need to love one another. So let's forget about God. When you talk about God only, we fight. Don't bring God into the picture. Whether he's there or not, what do we care? Forget about God. Let's not talk about God. If we talk about God, we end up fighting. So let's talk about just loving one another. All over the world, this thing is going on, you see. 
Let's talk about loving one another. Let's be very practical people. Let's be good people. Let's love one another. Let's not talk about God because when you talk about God, it always comes back to your God, my God, his God, her God, and so on. Then we start fighting. Why bring that subject up? Let's talk about loving one another. So they talk and philosophize about loving one another. <laughs> that if we love one another, there you see God. In that love, there is God. If we love one another, then that is God. Love is God. So forget about God. Let's love one another. That's their philosophy. But something terribly wrong with it. <laughs> something is terribly wrong with it. What is wrong with it? What is wrong with this? Let me show this because in order to understand loving one another, you need to understand this because no use studying it very superficially. Just love one another, do this, do this. You know, that's not the way we should go about it. We should go to the intent of what the law is saying. What did God mean when he said love? Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. All right? Okay. Why is this philosophy wrong? Why is this idea wrong that let's forget about God and let's talk about loving one another? Because if you love one another anyway, God is there in that love. You know, you forget about God. That's wrong. Reason number one why it's wrong is this. It is complete reversing of the order of things in the Ten Commandments. You're reversing the order of things in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments puts it how? I said two sections. The first section is about loving God or your relationship with God. Second section is about loving one another. What these people are doing is they're saying, let's put the loving one another first because these are humanists. They think the human being is more important than God. How we relate to, relate to one another and how we live with one another is more important than whether we believe in God, whether we know God, whether we have a relationship. That is not important, they say, because that's why we are fighting. That's why we are confused. That's why we are, you know, we can't stand one another. Let's forget about that. Let's put it last. Put first man, your brother sitting next to you, your sister sitting over here, your neighbor. Love one another. Let's put the love one another first. Let's be nice humanists. It's very fashionable to be humanist now. Right? So they say, let's put that first. But you're doing something very wrong. The Bible states the law in that order because it must be in that order. Right? First love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So the Ten Commandments order is reversed. The second problem is, it is a complete reversal of the order in which Jesus stated the Ten Commandments. Remember Mark chapter 12. When the man asked, which is the greatest commandment, Jesus puts two commandments together, the two sections, summarized into two statements, and states them together. But in, there is an order also. He says, the foremost is loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Second one is loving your neighbor as yourself. First is loving God. Second is, I told you there that you cannot separate the two. That is why he put the two together. The man asked only for one, but Jesus puts two together nevertheless. Why? The two cannot be separated. If that one is there, the second one will inevitably be there. So he puts the two together. So when these people say, let's love one another, forget about God, they're once again reversing the order, the order that Jesus established. The third reason is that this, that whenever you put anything before God, it's an insult to God. You say, let's put God next. Let's see about God later on. Forget about God. Let's concentrate on people. It sounds nice to these years, right? Sounds nice. If you're not a biblically oriented person, you'll say, amen, that's what I say. <laughs> They've made a religion out of humanism now. They put man on top. Man is the most important thing. Let's take care of man first. Forget about God. That's the attitude. That is an insult to God. God must be in the first place. 
first God. Now some people think, well, God is an egotistic person. He wants first every time. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. He wants to be number one in our life all the time. Why can't I have somebody else as number one? Why does he want to be? He's a very, he's an egomaniac, I think. Some kind of an egomaniac that wants to be number one all the time. Doesn't like to be number two. No, God is not an egomaniac. God is not a, God's, God has not got a psychological problem or anything like that. God is saying that's the order. That's the way it is. That's the way things are. Why did he say, seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things shall be added to you? Because I made the things, man, be connected with me. I'm the maker and the supplier. If you get disconnected from me, then you get disconnected from the supply. He's talking sense. Who has problem is not God, us, many times. You know. Be connected with me, then you'll be connected with all that I supply. That's what he's saying. So anytime you put other things first, then God. You put man first, and then God. You say, let's forget about God or think about God later. That's wrong. That's a wrong approach. The fourth thing is more profound thing. And that is, that type of approach where it says, let's love one another, forget about God and the whole business, the idea of God and all that. That is wrong. Because it takes such a false view of man and the self. A false view of man and the self. Let me explain this. These people that say, let's love one another, don't even understand what man has become as a result of the fall. What fall has done to man. You know what fall has done to man? You know what is the outcome of the fall? What happened as a result of man's sin? You can say it in one word, and that is man has become selfish. Selfishness is the phase of sin. Selfishness is the image and likeness of sin. God's image and likeness is love. Man was created in God's image and likeness, to be in love and walk in love. When man sinned, selfishness became his nature. He became an extremely selfish, self-centered person. Selfishness, self-centeredness is the thing that man is ruled by today. Now, This is the thing that has done so much damage in this world. That's why we can't be at peace. That's why homes cannot have peace. That's why we cannot be at peace with one another many times. That's why there are wars. That's why there's so much tension in this world. That's why all these problems going on. Because as a result of sin, entire humanity had this new nature, a nature of selfishness. They're characterized by selfishness. One word characterizes human beings today in their fallen nature and state, and that is selfishness. Thanks be to God, who always causes us triumph in his name. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God, who always causes us triumph in his name. Thanks be to God, thanks be to God. We have overcome, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have overcome by the power of your name. Jesus, you're the one. Us triumph in his name. Thanks be God, who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be God, who always causes us to triumph in his name. 